Hey everyone, welcome back to Nick at Night. This is Nick from Comic Culture. We're going to go over the books that we got on the 9th of June, and I'll tell you what I thought about them. Stay tuned. All right, so we got a lot of good books on June 9th. So as always, we're going to do non-spoilery reviews here. Um, we are going to enjoy our coffee. This is the relaxing show. This is a show where I don't have to really worry about too much. So mm. always enjoy the coffee. So let's get started. We always start with the big two because that's the smallest lot. So let's start with DC with the Joker. Issue number four, um, Tynan and March on this issue right here. Very, very good issue. Um, I liked it better. I don't know if I liked it better than the third issue or not, but this is kind of the big climactic um, battle. So I still won't go into spoilers about who's fighting who, but just imagine that um, the Joker's kind of been framed for murdering everybody in Arkham, kind of gassing them with the gas, with the uh, with his uh, gas um, that he uses in the past. And so pretty much everybody in the world that had like family or you know their boss or whatever in Arkham is now hunting the Joker down. And Jim Gordon is kind of hunting the Joker down too. So uh, there's a big battle. We get some interesting conclusions at the end. We get some very, very dark moments that are reminiscent of um, Killing Joke, obviously, with their history. Um, we get some really cool, like, intimate moments here. There's a few pages right here where um, it's just kind of like one-on-one -on -one action and the Joker is just absolutely insane. Uh, the line work, the like the soullessness in his eyes. There's a few panels here that have a close-up of the Joker's face, and there's there's nothing there, and it's just super scary, and uh, I just absolutely love the art um, and the coloring here. Meanwhile, our folks at home, uh, Oracle and uh, Cassandra and everybody that are kind of at home, kind of holding down uh, Gotham, uh, they're kind of in for a rude awakening as well. So we got a little bit of uh, hints about what's happening at the home front. We get a little bit of conclusion of what's happening um, overseas where the Joker has been hiding this whole time. Uh, we get an appearance from Vengeance. We get some really eerie one-on-one -on -one moments with the Joker. And it's just kind of, uh, it's good, man. I, I really, really enjoy it. So Joker number four, Tynan. Very interesting, very, very good, spooky read. Highly recommended. All right, moving over to Batman the Detective. This is... Uh, this is from Taylor. This is from Tom Taylor. So this one is a little bit about kind of like the origin. And I forget the guy's name. Batman's been kind of teaming up with this one guy. And he's like the world's best manhunter. And I forgot what his name was. But it kind of shows how him and Bruce met. How Bruce was trained by him. And then, you know, the, the, the same thing happens kind of like in the movies where... Uh, remember the Christopher Nolan movies when Ra's al Ghul is like, okay, to be initiated into the League of Assassins, you must murder this guy. He's a rule breaker, he, whatever. And he doesn't do it and he kind of goes AWOL. Um, similar thing happens here. He just, you know, really can't pull the trigger, <laughs> uh, metaphorically speaking, and literally. And, um, you know, they kind of go their separate ways. He learns what he needs to learn from the guy. He goes his separate ways. It, it goes over a few stories about how they met, you know, here and there since then. Um, and then it kind of, um, you know, has, has an interesting conclusion at the end where Bruce Wayne finds himself in some trouble. So I'm going to flash a page here. Nothing too, nothing really spoilery because we don't really know what's going on. It could just be a, a trick and I'll cover the bubble. But is that, is that supposed to be Bruce? Dude is jacked. He looks completely different than what we're used to seeing. So I don't know. That doesn't look like the Bruce that we're used to seeing. It looks like I don't know, man. It looks like a, I don't, I don't know. He's just completely ripped and jacked in that. But it's it's a good read. I like the detective. I like um, the main Batman run, and this is the only other Batman book, I think, that I'm reading right now. So it's grabbed my attention, and I've tried a lot of them, a lot of side stories. All right, so guys, that was the only DC books I got. Mm. I don't know, and I only got two Marvel books. Let me go into Spider Shadow, number three, Chip Zdarsky. I love this book. I think I enjoy it. I think issue two, this is issue three. I think issue two was my favorite because it was the Peter Parker just kind of going insane and just kind of taking everybody out. 
because he's got that symbiote suit. He's really kind of, um, you know, taking over his personality, bringing out the worst in him. And this is like the Sinister Six's response to that. They're like, listen, he's just going out and killing everybody. So we need to kill Spider-Man. So let's get together. We'll band together. We will set up this big trap. Craven will kind of put it all together for us. We'll get him out of the city so the other heroes can't inter interfere. Um, and we will kind of, uh, you know, all get him at the same time. Just follow the follow the plan, right? I think Craven says that a few times, um, if I'm not mistaken. You know, draw him out. You know, remember the plan. Remember the plan. Something like that. So it's it's classic symbiote um, tactics. You know, like noise and fire are like his worst enemies. So they try to play to that. Um, it doesn't quite go according to plan. Some people, there's some casualties here and there. We get an interesting revelation um, at the end uh, with Jonah and, uh, and, and Peter. We, we get a little bit of Black Cat and Mary Jane action at the end. And then we get, um, the, the ending wasn't extremely obvious to me. Although, never mind. It, it, um, see, that's what I love. I love doing these videos because it gives me an opportunity to flip back through and kind of talk it out. And now I have a better understanding of what the last page is all about, but I don't understand how that happened. I might need to go back and read again. So there's a bit, there's a big problem at the end, <laughs> at the end of this issue that I don't know how they're going to overcome, but I'm not entirely sure how that happened. And um, so, yeah, I love Spider Shadow. I, I don't read any other Spider Man books, and I absolutely love this one. Can I just say real quick? I've been holding this book for just a couple minutes while I've been talking, and it's already wrinkled and rippled from just the humidity of my hand, the oils on my hand. It's already gotten more wrinkled in the back. Marvel, you're killing me. And when I bought this book, <clears throat> it's got that dark bind right here. And I think the Rogue Trader said it's called chipping or something like that, where it's automatically, where it just basically comes out of the press when they fold it, and it's already got this white... Um, uh, this white crease on the on, on the fold right there, and it's just because the paper sucks, right? It's just like super. It's not even. It's not cardstock. It's not anything. Whereas, you know, some other books. I mean, Joker is clearly thicker pages, right? Absolute crap quality on the books, and you can't even buy a nine eight off the shelf, which is really a shame if they take off for that. So anyway, anyway, I don't want that to deter you from picking up this book because this book is is great. The quality of Marvel books is awful. <laughs> All right. So and then I don't get it because I think this is a little bit. This is a Marvel book and it has a different page quality, but it suffers the exact same problem. The entire spine is going to be broken and white. Here is Reborn number six. This is the second connecting cover. <laughs> I'm not going to get this right. I keep saying it over and over again. This is number six. One, two, three, and four are connecting covers. Okay. Five, six, seven, and eight, I believe are all connecting covers too. And then um, I think eight is when we get the, the new series and it's actually a number one. I'm never going to be able to explain that any better than that. <laughs> but I actually like this book a lot. Um, it was kind of confusing. Not confusing. It was interesting to read a, um, a Wonder Woman type character inside of a marvel book which essentially this is who it is right this is wonder woman she's got the gauntlets she's got some kind of lasso of something um i'll just show a splash page right here i mean she's getting her butt kicked constantly but she's like the last survivor and she's like defeated all these gods she doesn't have mjolnir but she's got the rainbow bridge like axe uh, which is interesting um she doesn't think anything's wrong she's kind of like battle hungry you know she can turn all of her enemies that she defeats to stone. Um, she used to be in love with Namor. <laughs> but um, we have one of our heroes that's slowly remembering their um, origin and remembering that something's just not right and there used to be another way um, of life. He confronts her and kind of sets her straight. Now she's extremely int intrigued as to you know who he is, where he came from, how does he know what he knows, um, things like that. And so then, of course, like we've seen in many other heroes reborn issues um that character is introduced or reunited with the other characters we've been building this whole time to create this avengers team that is knows something's wrong and they've acknowledged it and they're all teaming up to face whatever you know foes did this so hmm. heroes reborn has been killer i've really enjoyed it i love all the art um 
I've loved the story. I've loved the way it's been constructed so far. I like the way the characters are portrayed. Um, I don't really read too many other Marvel books, like in the X area or Avengers area or Fantastic Four area, but I absolutely love Heroes Reborn. So I can't wait for the rest of them. All right. That's all the big two, guys. Going to move into a fun book. I bought this book. It was a cover buy for sure. Um, it was Ash on the cover there with his boomstick and his chainsaw arm. And then Vampirella with that classic like Evil Dead uh, skull on there. This is Dynamite Lives. I believe it's issue one. Yeah, Dynamite Lives issue one. Again, Ash and Vampirella on the cover. Vampirella, I heard, will change your life. I, I don't buy it. So it's classic Ash. <laughs> Work, working at S-Smart. Shop, at, shop smart. Shop S-Smart. Working there. You know, the deadites come and start attacking him for whatever reason. They, you know, heads start rolling around talking to him. He's kicking everyone's ass, really creative. Um, and then it kind of shows what seems to be a um, Vampirella ongoing story, perhaps that's kind of tying into this one, or it would let up to this one. So there's a lot of history with her and some other folks, <clears throat> and they're kind of battling. I don't really quite understand the dynamics going on there um, necessarily. And then the very end, uh, there were some cameos and some appearances of some characters that i'm not exactly sure who they are the significance of their um you know showing up is but um i thought it was interesting it was a it was just a fun read it's kind of always fun to watch ash just just destroy deadites constantly dynamite lives number one it's a cover by for sure had a good time reading it but i don't think i'm going to get the rest um but maybe maybe ash is just interesting enough to make me want to get the rest of them I just don't have any idea what's going on with the Vampirilla. If you know, let me know in the comments because I have no clue. All right, let's keep going. We got Eve, number two. This is from Boom Studios. I got this book, and then I have the second print, number one. They came out in the same week. Really enjoyed this issue. I like this issue way more than issue one. I'll tell you why I didn't like issue one real quick. I didn't like issue one because she kind of accepted whatever stories she was told just way too casually, in my opinion. You know, if you walk, if you came out of the Matrix, which essentially is what this book is, this girl's been kind of raised in a Matrix-like environment. Instead of it being like a false reality, it's still a false reality, but she learned all these um, survival tactics. She's learning how to like sail and how to do other things. And it was all because one day she'll be released from her pod and she'll need those skills when she gets up, well, hey, kitty. Well, how are you? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we had a, we had a cameo from Maya. <laughs> anyway, so now she's released from her pod. She is reun She's not reunited, but she's introduced to a character who her father built um, and disguised himself as a teddy bear to be more appealing to a child, I suppose. So we do get a little backstory on the dad, where he's been, who this bear is, how he got to be who he is, um, and we have the girl and the bear sitting out on their adventure. And um, I guess the girl's name is Eve. Duh, it's named Eve. And I don't know what the bear's name is. I think she said it a few different times um, in this in this issue. It's going to kill me if I don't if I don't uh, remember it. I think it was just a number. No, Wexler. Okay, Wexler. So Wexler and Eve. So we learn a little bit about what happened to the world. We learn about where she's heading towards. We get a nice little cliffhanger at the end. So we do get a little or origin story of um, the bear slash robot Wexler. We get a little bit of an idea of what happened to the world. We get introduced to some um, threats that are in that world. And we get a cool little cliffhanger at the end. So I, it, was, it was a very informative issue. I, again, the art and coloring is great. I'm loving Eve. And I'm so glad that issue number two... It, in my opinion, it was better than issue number one because it was a little bit, I'm not going to say it was not plausible because it's a comic book, but it was hard to believe. And this book did a little better job at that. And I like the dialogue between Eve and Wexler too. It was, it's a pretty cool book. I love Eve. Eve is great. All right. This next book is The Secret Land number one. So this is actually a book that my comic book shop, uh, Cadets Comics and Toys in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Check them out if you're in the Middle Tennessee area for sure. New shop in Spring Hill. Um, definitely worth a trip out there. Um, this is a book that uh, they gave me because they just wanted to see what I thought. And I think it was a book that really wasn't requested a whole lot. 
but they had a few copies and it was an interesting premise. So Secret Land, if you like Nazi, spy, um, there's a little bit of a supernatural element that they hinted at in here. So essentially we have this woman um, who's a spy for the U.S. military and there's a man who's generally, he's probably in the Navy, something like that. Um, and they kind of had to go their separate ways to perform their their different tasks, right? So she infiltrates a Nazi base. He kind of goes more towards, um, you know, just more combat related uh, missions. And she's working on this like power source with this engineer and um, it, it's some secret Arctic Nazi base. Um, she, they get actually get it activated. It's it's somehow like a like a like a miracle generator of some kind. And there's a little hint of a supernatural force behind it. She kind of has these visions, and some of the other people in the area say they have these visions too. Um, and so it's kind of like this story of, you know, what is this machine they actually built? Is it tapping into some su supernatural power? You know, this whole base is run by Nazis, and then you have these this couple that have been separated but are in part of the same war, and they each kind of think, you know, the worst of each other. Like, oh, she actually died, or or he died, or is it a cover up, or did he actually die? So they don't actually know if each other are alive at the moment. There's a lot going on here, and I actually really really enjoyed it. So uh, this is the Secret Land number one. I would pick it up if you're into Nazis, a little bit of supernatural um, stuff, and some war books. I'd pick it up. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, another book I was really, really looking forward to uh, from Aftershock. This is Bunny Mask number one. I was looking for the variant covers. Uh, my buddy Kirk actually picked up the black and white variant. And I think it's like perforated, right? So you can cut out the actual mask and wear it. I don't know if anybody would actually do that. Um, this is a pretty interesting book. So this book from Aftershock replaces Maniac from New York uh, or Maniac of New York or whatever it's called. Um, so that one just wrapped up. <clears throat> so they needed a new horror title. So I'm assuming that this one just kind of fills the spot for that. This is Paul Tobin and Andrea uh, Muti and Tyler Esposito. So Bunny Mask is interesting. You kind of get <clears throat> a mixture of, it's like a murder mystery, um, kidnapping, supernatural mixed with like a psychopath and like this guy who's um, schizophrenic, right? So they have like this schizophrenic father who's like abusive to his daughter. She's kind of been brainwashed. Um, into kind of like, you know, finding the truth and finding the truth is to him, you know, digging this giant hole to the center of reality and you're going to find truth. So um, some other people get involved, um, unfortunately, in, in his shenanigans and uh, uh, there's some, some murders going on, some supernatural stuff. They see this monster and it kind of flashes forward um, a little bit and you get some characters that were in that situation in the past kind of reuniting, so we think. Um, and then we learn a little bit more about the supernatural aspects of this cave or property that all this kind of craziness happened or this craziness, uh, where it was going on. So there's kind of a little bit, of, there's a little bit going on here. I had a good time. The art is interesting. Uh, let me give you a little, a little hint of some of the art here without giving away too much. So it's just like cave systems and, an interesting, like, almost like watercolor-ish in a way. I don't know if that's a good, re a good way to explain it. What's a better way to explain the art in this? I can't even, I can't even um, think of another comic book that is drawn or is colored like this particular book. I had a good time with it though. It left some cliffhangers obviously at the end. Um, it's it's going to get super, more supernatural soon. And it's, uh, I think the covers are fire though. Look at that cover over here. It's just creepy. Yeah, so Bunny Mask number one. I was looking forward to this book for a long time, and I think it was great. All right, Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton. This is yet another book that um, my shop owner uh, tossed my way because, you know, he kind of wanted to see what I thought about it, and I absolutely, uh, I didn't hear about it at all. Um, it's a new a new uh, image number one. Was it Kyle Starks and Christopher, or Chris, uh, uh, Swartzer? I, I can't, I can't say the people's names. <laughs> anyway, Six Sidekicks, Trigger Keaton, interesting premise. So basically, um, imagine like, I don't know, Chuck Norris in his heyday, right? Doing films and TV. But like, <clears throat> instead of not hitting the stuntman, he like punches him in the face. He's yelling at the sidekick kid. <clears throat> That's like part of the, uh, uh, part of the show. You know, he's, 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 uh, flirting and, um, uh, 
and you know harassing the women on stage and things like that he's a drunk so you know but he's tough he's you know martial art guy and everything like that so um you know eventually you know spoiler alert there's a body here and there's six people across the bottom so it's not too much of a spoiler but this man actually dies and it's kind of a mystery and so the six sidekicks of trigger keaton are actually the six people like throughout their careers that he's been on tv shows and stuff with and they've all had their like falling outs and it gives a little synopsis when you introduce the characters like you know uh, this is sidekick number two they joined uh trigger keaton on some uh tv show and then like the next page it'll say uh trigger Ke uh, trigger keaton um, can't work with this kid because he can't act or whatever or he said something stupid or something like that and then he ended up losing their career <laughs> And so all these people are pissed at him for some reason. So they're all practically suspects, but it's kind of like their journey to kind of figure out what the hell happened to Trigger Keaton because he was found hanged in his apartment. So it was an interesting thing. The ending was kind of weird. I, I you know, the, you know, they're all a bunch of like used to be actors and stuntmen and things like that. And there's kind of like a anchorman moment where like all these stuntmen get around and they start arguing about stuff and fighting. It's like the anchorman getting around fighting. So I, I think the ending was 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 interesting. The premise is pretty funny, and um, I had a good time reading it. So we'll see where it goes. All right, last book, and I don't know if it was my favorite, but man, it was really 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 close. This is Geiger number three. Whew. So Jeff Johns, you know, I liked Geiger number one. Um, the the last you know the first like two thirds three quarters of it. Um, the ending, I didn't quite know where they were going to go with that. I was like, what the heck is this, like, um, uh, Las Vegas world? What is this, like, Joffrey-like character from Game of Thrones? He's super annoying. And I didn't like I didn't like what the expanded world looked like. I liked what the, our intimate world with this character looked like, with the bomb shelter and his family and this glowing man and his him, him getting um, attacked and defending himself. So I really, really liked issue number one. Issue number two focused more on ancillary characters and more about like the, um, this particular mom and her kids and her, her trying to get these kids out. Cause she knows that place isn't safe. So inside the dome of like Las Vegas, it focused more on, um, and then we got our main character at the end when the kids were trying to escape. But in issue three, we get, um, background on our main character we get some amazing shots of our main character. There's nothing, there's nothing spoilery about this picture. It just says, I'm Geiger. And we already knew that. Really, really cool art. What is it? Uh, Gary Frank and Brad Anderson. So we get some, we get a little bit of origin about Geiger himself. And, and we get some information on how he can, you know, withstand the environment without a suit on when everybody else needs a suit. Um, we do get an origin of how the, I'm going to keep calling him Joffrey. Cause I don't know what his, I don't know what his name is. We keep getting it. Uh, we, we got a, um, an origin of how Joffrey's face got messed up. Uh, we did get to see inside the bunker semi spoiler there, but Geiger's a pretty badass little character and, uh, he's got some pretty interesting skill and he's pissed and there's a good reason why he's pissed. Um, the end of the book has got, a bunch of filler pages, just a bunch of advertisements. And then um, it's got a preview for Ordinary Gods in the back. And there's Mom, Mother of Madness. Uh, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones is tied to that. So we got a Joffrey King in this one, and we got Amelia Clark doing Mom of Ma Mother of Madness. But Geiger was, was, it was worth it for sure. I actually love this issue a lot. It's my favorite issue so far. Um, even even past number one, because we got a little bit of character development, but this really added more background, some more history, um, kind of explained how he can be the way he is. And the art and everything was really, really good. So Geiger number three, I absolutely loved it. Cool. So guys, that was, <laughs> that was a lot of books. So I didn't get to DC Pride, um, number one. It was just a little bit longer. So that's on the backlog. I got a couple days. Um, I can actually read that. So, um, I'll let you guys know what I thought about that, but, um, yeah, which one of these was your favorite? I think it's a tough one. It's either between Geiger or, um, probably between Geiger, Eve and the Joker. So if I had to, so I'm picking three, sorry, Geiger, Eve and Joker, Geiger, Eve and Joker. Those are my top three. 
love those books just for completely different reasons joker because it's just so dark um it's just a great story overall and those joker one-on-one like hopeless he's you know got you kind of moments like that's when joker's the best in those one-on-one moments eve because it did a great job of building out the story giving some cool background it did a lot in one issue it did a lot of explaining in one issue and it doesn't feel like it, it wasn't heavily in the narrative it was very very fluid I just like the way that they did it. They give you a lot of information with a little bit of dialogue and really good art. And then Geiger, for the exact same reason, they did a lot of storytelling and background um, and character building with just a little bit of um, little bit of dialogue and some amazing art as well. So those are my tops. What a great week. So what did you guys get? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, like, subscribe, um, hit that bell notification for future videos. Ding, 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 that bell notification for future videos, as, as Big Herm would say. Um, down below, check out the other channels for the PCP Army Bad Batch. We got tons of great content. Um, Whiplash Wednesday. If you're on practically anybody in the community's live chat or if they're doing any kind of live, one of us is probably going to be in there. It's probably going to be Travis. <laughs> so say hello to us. Check the channels out in the description below. We thank you for watching and I will see you in the comments.